Welcome back to Memorial Stadium, Austin, Texas, number 23 against number 13. Why the urgency of this ball game tonight? It's right there in the conference standings. The Longhorns are undefeated, and for Texas Tech, they are 2-1. And, and Mike Gottfried never before have so many Texas Aggies pull for the Longhorns on one night. In fact, R.C. Slocum said he's going to be having his hook em high tonight because Texas Tech has already knocked off A&M. But should Texas win tonight, then the Aggies can control their own destiny. Hi, everybody. Ron Franklin along with my buddy Mike Godfrey. Mike, the other thing that we're finding out, spending the week down here in the great Southwest, how important it is as far as this conference race is concerned. Ron, there's no doubt the winner of tonight's game really is in the driver's seat. And when you look at this conference, every player and every team in this conference wants to be the last champion of the Southwest Conference. It's a goal that every team has. And tonight's ball game will go a lot, a long way in deciding who that is. And when you look at Thursday night's development with Virginia beating Florida yeah. State, Texas wins all of a sudden gives a little respect to this conference, a respect that they need. Well, as far as Texas Tech is concerned, though, they have been a thorn in the side of the Longhorns, particularly the last couple of years. And to get more on that, let's go down to the sideline. And here's Mike Adamley. Mike? Well, Ron and Mike, three points in the other direction, and the Red Raiders are a perfect 7-0. They have won their last four games, a streak that began in Lubbock when All-America linebacker Zach Thomas returned this interception for a game-winning touchdown in the final seconds against Texas A&M, snapping the Aggies 29 game conference winning streak. Now a year ago the Red Raiders were in a four-way tie for the conference championship and they received these championship rings to signify that. But Zach Thomas and his teammates are loath to wear them. The reason they are fully aware that this is the final season of Southwest Conference play and they want to be the sole champions. They want to share this ring with no one. Gentlemen. Okay Mike we look forward to uh, hearing from you tonight. There's the man, Spike Dykes. He holds the longest tenure of Southwest Conference coaches, nine seasons. And I think to the man that uh, coaches all over the country would say he's a, he's a player's kind of coach. He's one of the really good guys in college coaching. Greaser prepares to kick it off, and Mike Adams will be back in the deep safety for the Texas Longhorns. You see his average on punt returns, but Mike back deep for this kick return as this capacity house of almost 80,000 strong is up, and they are cheering. Adams from the two. Stop just short of the 20-yard line. And now let's take a look at the Russell Athletic starting lineup for the Texas Longhorns. Number five, James Brown. He didn't throw a ball almost all week trying to nurse a bruised shoulder. His health is very big as far as the horns are concerned. Receiver, number 83, Mike Adams. You just saw him. He's a premier receiver. He is having to wear a knee brace because of an injury he suffered against Virginia. The offensive line, number 69, Dan Neal. He's an All-American, and Dan Neal and John Elmore, probably the most consistent performers on that offensive front. Straight ahead, five, almost ten yards is Sean Mitchell. Banks on the tackle. Here are the starters for the Red Raiders. Anthony Armour on the defensive front creates havoc. He is a very good one, a big play man. Number 35, Zach Thomas. You saw what Mike Adamley showed about him. He's on a lot of All-American lists, plays with great intensity. And in the secondary, you might think Tech is playing with more than one number 12 tonight. Marcus Coleman seems to be everywhere at the right time. Brown under pressure, pass incomplete. Well on the throne, it was McLemore he was looking for, and Armour with the pressure. Ron, the problem that Texas is going to have tonight, they have to solve the eight-man front defense of Texas Tech. You look at this graphic, 20, 21 takeaways have led to 75 points. In the last four games, they've created 15 turnovers, converted nine into 55 points. They always put one more man on the line of scrimmage than you can block, so Texas has to have a plan to control that. Mike, when you hear a figure like 50% or better blitzing, that is just inordinately high. Adams in motion. 
Russell straight ahead. Sean will take it out close to the 30 yard line where he is gang tackled. Armour, one of those in the stop along with Robert Johnson from his linebacking position. Got a nice block from fullback uh, Ricky Williams, a freshman out of San Diego, California. Fourth season for John Makovic. We couldn't find John at the beginning of the ball game. That's the reason we didn't talk about him right after. Right after we showed you Spike's picture, but he was in a huddle with his players, knowing how very important this game is here tonight for the season and the conference race. Adams to the top of your screen. Brown on first down to throw, and that one is too tall. James Brown tonight, his biggest job is going to be finding out where. Marcus Coleman is lined up number 12 because that'll tip him off a little bit of where the blitz is coming to. Mike, take a look at his throwing motion. This cold weather has to be tough on having a problem like that with that soreness, wouldn't you think? Mitchell, nothing at right tackle. He's going to be knocked down, and there's the guy we are just talking about. Number 12, Marcus Coleman came in after Corey Chandler had made the initial hit on him. Ron, you're, you're right about James Brown now, and I watched him practice yesterday, and he doesn't, first of all, look to me like he's got a real strong arm, but he's hurt a little bit, and his shoulders hurt. They gave him some time off, but, and John Makovic talked about it yesterday, but he has a very low delivery also. His biggest place tonight is maybe scrambling plays where he's able to run against the man coverage blitz. The shoulder injury came against Virginia and it was on a running play when he was tackled. Swings it out in the flat. Ricky Williams first time to see him for the night and he breaks it for 15 now 20 and he'll spot him out of bounds just across the 45 yard line and let's go down and check once again with Mike Adamley Mike you know Ron and Mike the uh, shoulder tendonitis that James Brown has has been bothering on and off really all season long he has done one thing to help ease the pain normally he throws he holds the ball down lower when he receives the center snap he has consciously this week told us that he's going to take the center snap and hold it up a little bit higher, cock his arm so it's in the cock position. That way when he raises to throw the ball, he doesn't have the pain. Okay, Mike, we'll keep an eye on that motion. 19 yards on that last pass play to Williams. Brown going to go on top. Well overthrown. Justin McLemore was the closest man to him. And there was a flag down. When you talk about quarterbacks, when you get late in a season like this, you got to watch as a coach that you don't wear them out because they throw so much. It's like a baseball pitcher. The longer they pitch, sometimes they need a rest. There is no flag. The pass was uncatchable. Second down. Noel Jackson, very clear with the call. Not hard to understand as far as the fans here are concerned. Wayne McGarrity comes into the lineup. Number eight, sorry. James Brown, 9 1 and 1 as a starter. He's thrown at least one touchdown pass in his last nine games. Pretty impressive quarterback here at Texas. from the outside has the pass in and out of the hands of McGarity. Ricky Williams the only setback third down the line to make is the 43 yard line of Texas Tech. And they go to the running play and Ricky Williams will be stopped after a gain of one by Sean Banks. Sean Banks is a very impressive linebacker also when you play next to Zach Thomas sometimes you don't get noticed as much but Sean Banks when you watch him on tape makes plays for this Texas Tech defense. Number 46 is going to step up there and catch the trap and make the tackle on Ricky Williams. Mark Schultz back to handle the punting for the Longhorns kicking away to Dane Johnson and the special teams for the Red Raiders as far as return have been very good in 1995. Driving spiral at the 11 yard line. And the Longhorns are there to stop him after a gain of only three. And here are the starters for Texas Tech. Hans Bart is the workhorse. You will see him 
both rushing and also receiving. He leads the team in both categories. Wide receivers, Phil Scoble, his name a legend in the Southwest Conference in the Cotton Bowl academic all-conference performer. And up front, Ed Hendricks, the only senior among that group. He is their leader. Doyle Jackson about to whistle the play clock back in. Hansbard gets the pitch. And he'll have a couple. Let's take a look at those starters for the Longhorns tonight. Tony Brackens, he is back after missing almost four games with a broken bone in his foot. That spells relief for the Longhorn defense. Number 50, Tyson King leads the team in sacks and fumbles caused at linebacker. And in the secondary, Chris Carter, second on the team in tackles. He had 14 individual stops against Pitt earlier this year. Leffert back to Hansbar, tripped up in the backfield, 59, Kyle Richardson got a hand on him. And Ron, what Texas is doing in the first couple plays against that quick huddle and quick run to the line of scrimmage is they're not flip-flopping their personnel. They're lining up in a 4-3 defense and just staying in it. Last year against Texas Tech, they were trying to move people around, and Texas Tech had them really confused and beat them very soundly at the line of scrimmage. We saw Shane Rink coming off the field. He is a defensive lineman. Texas got the extra defensive back end with a third down. Leffords has it complete. That is McKenzie lost the ball. And they say play is dead. It'll be well short of the first down as Taji Allen is there to make the play. And a standing ovation for the Texas defense. Brad Cade standing back to punt. He'll wait uh, for that at the three yard line. That's Adams deep downfield, number 83. Fair catch called for and made at the 44. Short drop and a quick throw. John Mitchell, as they moved him out of the backfield, Mike, he lined up in a split back and then went outside. What they're trying to do, Ron, is make Texas Tech declare whether or not they're going to blitz. When they shift Sean Mitchell out, now that makes the backers have to move out a little bit, which means they can't blitz because they're man-on-man -on, -man on the side. See, James Brown with just a short drop, quick hitch to Sean Mitchell, but look at the yardage after the catch. Again, not a good job of the defensive backs. Texas Tech closing in. It's a gain of 25 yards on the catch by Mitchell. This time he'll run it. Breaks it open on the left side at the 20, at the 10. Touchdown, Sean Mitchell. to attempt the extra point, trying to put the Longhorns on top, 7-0. He's got it. And as we go to break, let's take a look once again at the 32-yard touchdown run by Sean Mitchell. 7-0 Longhorns. Uh, unusual weather here in Austin. Very cool, 46 degrees, 70% chance of rain tonight. She folks really kind of bundled up. Wind coming out of the north. I know that Doug Wilson, the director of operations here at this stadium, he and his crew did a great job of getting this place dry because there was a lot of rain overnight and also during the day. Todd Walker, left side, has five, has 10, and he's going to take it 
across the 40-yard line. And let's go down to check in with Mike Adamley again. Mike? Ron, you talked about the rain. The first thing that John McAvitt did this morning when he woke up was call the Texas director of events, Doug Wilson, and ask about the weather. Doug couldn't do anything about those heavy rains, but he could give the coach an extended forecast courtesy of the Longhorn Weather Network, a computer, a satellite dish that's tied into the Doppler radar system. This is what the state of Texas looked like at about 4 p.m. today. Showers moving out to the northeast, and then there's Austin, Texas, and Travis County. Let's hope the rain stays away. Yep, we do. Ball is complete to Walker. He took a heck of a shot and held on. It was Westbrook who came up and hit him and put a star by Walker's name. How he held on, I don't know, Mike. And, Ron, when you look at Texas Tech, the one reason they don't lose ball games is they've only had eight turnovers in seven games. Bryant Westbrook really with a good hit on Todd Walker, but you're right, he held on the football. Texas Tech does not turn the ball over. McKenzie at the bottom of the screen. Second down and short, and it's hands barred straight ahead. Byron will uh, be tackled by Dusty Renfro, and he's going to have the Texas Tech first down. Byron hands barred is really a good running back for Texas Tech, was a very highly recruited player. But where he's most dangerous on is the outside runs, and he's a big player that they like to throw screen passes to. Leads the Southwest Conference there, and that statistic is to see. Well, as I mentioned off the top of the telecast, leads this Red Raider team in both rushing and also receiving. Very, lot, very religious and, young man. And a lot of those passes are screens. Leverage. Come set deep over the middle, going to be picked off at the 27-yard line by Chris Carter. And now here comes a flag way downfield, well behind the play, in fact, 30 yards behind the play. And that makes their ninth turnover now in seven ball games. But I'm sure what Dick Widner is telling his quarterback, Zebby Lethridge, is, First interception in 212 pass attempts. Yeah, you know what? He's probably telling him it's over now. Now relax That's and right. play and then and throw the football. You want that kind of record out of your quarterback. You do not want quarterbacks to throw interceptions, but you also do not want them to get tight as they go toward a record. And now Zebby Lethridge maybe can loosen up a little bit as a quarterback, but he's threw that ball right to Chris Carter, number 16 over the middle. Zebby Lethridge back with a throw, eyeing up his receiver, but Chris Carter broke on the ball and has been a big producer in the secondary for Gary Darnell's defense and good yardage tacked on. One of the things that has not been the forte of the Texas defense is interceptions this year. You hate to see it happen to Zebby Lethridge because you'd like to see him get to Trent Dilfer's record, but. Uh, Sometimes they'll loosen up a little bit more after that and be a little bit more productive for you. Second to interception by Carter this season as the discussion goes on. Spike Dykes, who has a lot of sayings, the head coach of Texas Tech, he said he's been as hot as a deep old stove for us. <laughs> Very popular coach in the state of Texas, Ron, which you know. I spoke at the Texas High School Coaches Association this summer. He was the head coach, only head coach Southwest Conference who was there, but he was really mingling with the coach. Initially, we have two fouls. Personal foul here and personal foul here. The receiving team declines first foul. We will penalize here. Say one thing about Doyle, he's animated. Well, well he also it. explains it to you, but I'd like to know why in the world you'd it's, it, most most thought in the stands that it was offsetting. So dead ball foul and John Makovic paces the sideline and his ball club. Now it's being moved up to the 42 yard line. The 
public address announcer said after all that walking, <laughs> he's in now with balls at the 42. Texas has to take advantage of this. Brown gets away from one. Now with a run. Gets a nice block from a teammate upfield and goes out of bounds inside the 35. It was Rigger who finally forced him out. On James Brown's biggest plays may come tonight on runs just like that play because when you get against Texas Tech and they play a lot of man coverage, the defensive backs will turn and run with the wide receivers. And if he can break the chain, there's a lot of room for James Brown to run in. Here's the last play. You're going to see the last play. James Brown went back to pass. Man coverage by Texas Tech. Now watch as he takes off. There's no support because defensive backs are running with their back to the football. Ricky Williams with a nice block there, the fullback number 11. And they know that uh, James Brown is the key for them. And with that sore shoulder, they don't want him getting any hit any more than he has. That's Ricky Williams on the carry. Puts his shoulder down, and the freshman out of San Diego is going to have a 12 yard gain to the 20. Well, there's plays designed for Ricky Williams to go back at tailback. He plays at fullback for Texas. They'll bring Jeffrey Clayton in number 32 and move Ricky Williams back at tailback. And he runs the toss sweep probably better than any other back. So put him at tailback and let him run it. Knocked away on a nice defensive play. Number one, Dwayne Price. Sophomore out of College Station, Texas. Ron, Goes parallel to the ground to knock it down. Excuse me, Ron. You're going to see two people around Michael Adams all night as, as he goes out for passes. Called the playmaker by his coaches and his teammates. He's the one receiver, as I said earlier in the game, can break this game open with his speed. First quarter. Just under four minutes left to play. Quarterback draw. Marcus Coleman got to him first. Then you could see 35. Zach Thomas coming in to finish him off. Zach Thomas trying to impress the voters of the Butkus Award tonight. One of them's Vino Cook. Probably home in Pittsburgh watching Zach Thomas, number 35, sizing him up tonight. He's an outstanding linebacker for Spike Dykes' defense. As much publicity as Zach has gotten, he is very quick to give credit to Sean Banks, number 46, who you talked about earlier as being just really one of the inspirational guys and a good player on that defense. Brown's pass. Got it for the touchdown, Justin McLemore. One of the things that James Brown told us yesterday was with the extra week's work, he said, we have put in a lot of new things for this football game, and I feel really good about the approach offensively that we've taken. Bill Dawson to try to make it 14 to nothing. And he's got it. Ron, we've been talking all night about Michael Adams and what he does to a defense, and he really opens this pattern up. As this play starts, James Brown's going to set up for the pass. We're going to stop it here in a second. Let it go. Keep it going. Stop it right here. Stop it right here. That's Davis going across the middle, and there's two people are following Michael Adams across the middle. Now, Justin McLemore on the backside has one and one, one on one versus Barone McKinley. So there's no safety help because the safety was running with Michael Adams, and that opened it up for Justin McLemore and the touchdown. A very good play call by Gene. Dahlquist, the offensive coordinator, John McAvick. And again, it's because of the extra week off, they've been able to design some plays against this Texas Tech defense, and so far they're working. So, Mom, so Jen, what's up, Jim? What's up? Right over the middle at 
the 35 yard line. It's McKinley holding on to him. Well, John Makovic tonight on offense just really hit on all cylinders. As you see, John Makovic, he knows that he's got this defense a little bit back on their heels now with his play calling. Doing a good job running the football, doing a good job with play action, and not being able to get to James Brown, the Texas Tech defense. And I think a lot has to do with the play call of John Makovic tonight. Fitzgerald, the tight end in motion. The give goes to Williams, though. And he's going to be gang tackled. 99, Cody Pack, one of the first men to come up and, uh, and hit him. Mike, as you look at Patton there, he is a redshirt freshman out of Electra, Texas, which is up close to Wichita Falls. When this team flew to Penn State, it was the first time the youngster had flown in his life. And he also is claustrophobic. And they said when he got to, to, uh, to Penn State that he was as close to a basket case as any young man you've ever seen. He wasn't real wild about that. Well, that's two bad combinations. <laughs> You're going to be in an airplane. Deep. Adams is open and he overthrew him. Oh my, McKinley had lost him and say thanks to Zach Thomas for the pressure. Well, you look for your great players to make big plays and Zach Thomas did this because he didn't give James Brown the extra second that he needed to throw this football. Michael Adams comes out working against Jerome McKinley, gives him a good move. Jerome McKinley tries to make contact but Michael Adams is wide open but Zach Thomas pressured that football James Brown, he didn't have time to give it the ball. Brown wisely slides down. Zach Thomas is right there to pressure him, but it looks as though, yeah, he's going to have the first down. You like to have a mobile quarterback because these plays happen in ball games against defenses that like to drop deep in zones and also like to run man to man. James Brown finds nothing open, but he knows where the first down marker is. He's able to get there just under the hit of Zach Thomas. We're talking about Michael Adams when we were watching practice yesterday. He limped with that brace on. He could not have played as well tonight with that brace on because he just slowed down a little bit. Uh, he was really in comfort. You're right. You're right. Adams to the top of the screen. They fake it to Sean Mitchell. And the pass is complete. That's going to be Mitchell who comes out of the backfield. Again, the ability of James Brown to run and to avoid the sack. Sean Banks, the linebacker, was in on James Brown. He timed the blitz perfect, but James Brown was able to step away and throw away the ball, throw the ball away from the completion. About to go under eight minutes left until the halftime. 14 to nothing. The Texas Longhorns on top. Mitchell bounces off the tackler and then can't scrape off Robert Johnson, who got a hand on him. They tried to trap Robert Johnson. They tried to trap him with Ricky Williams, the fullback. They sent Ricky Williams to the left, brought him back to the right to trap Robert Johnson. That's about the third play Robert Johnson's made tonight. Big plays this Texas Tech defense. One of the things that Bucky Godbold said, uh, the running backs coach, you just saw on the sideline uh, talking to Ricky Williams, that he was pleased about the extra week. It was that much more time that freshman Ricky Williams could learn about this offense. Fourteen to nothing, Texas, and now for our Sega Sports Students of the Game from Texas Tech, sophomore free safety Dade Johnson. He is a political science major with a 2A GPA. And for Texas junior linebacker Tyson King, he's a sports management major with a 3.0 GPA. Sega Sports congratulates these fine student athletes. Sega. Longhorns with a third down, and they need just over five. Brown, and he will have the first down. Sean Banks trips him up. May be the best running play of Texas tonight. Get the ball to James Brown. Let him go back to pass. Let him find the opening scramble for the first down.
Big runs tonight by James Brown. Snap to the shotgun. He gets a good look at the defense. Nothing open. He knows he can make it to the first down. Sean Banks, number 46, eventually going to make the hit. And Mike, you know, as, as a former coach, when you have to defend all 11, and that number 11th player is really a pain for you, that, that's tough. Pressure backside, got it off, and just overthrown. Sean Mitchell is who he wanted, and guess who? Zach Thomas coming with the pressure. Zach Thomas, number 35, the middle linebacker, putting pressure again on James Brown. Now, he had Sean Mitchell open down the sideline, but the pressure by Zach Thomas was enough to make sure James Brown didn't make that completion. You know, Mike, we talked about all the rain. It looked as though that senior left tackle John Elmore slipped when he tried to make the adjustment to, to pick up the uh, the blitz, and he, that's the reason he went right by him. Sometimes on wet turf, you can slip because and I saw the players yesterday when there was a little water on the field uh, having a little problem slipping. Started with the blitz, they go with the running play as a flag is down, and Thomas will make the tackle on Ricky Williams. I think that was Sean Banks who was on his tiptoes about to fall over. Hey, let's check in with Mike Adamley. Mike, what do you have? You know, so many great stories about Zach Thomas in a conference that has produced such linebacking luminaries like Tommy Novus and Mike Singletary. I think it's a little odd that Zach's hero is Junior Seau. He loves his style and relentless style of play. Now, teammate Scott Jones, who's from Anaheim, California, was aware of Zach's uh, love for Junior Seau, so he went down to the Chargers camp. He got an autographed picture of Junior, actually a big uh, photograph, and it's prominently displayed on Zach's wall. Zach says he loves him. He's the man. Okay, that's a pretty good guy to idolize because he's a pretty good football player, and he plays the game hard all the time, Junior Seau. Ricky Williams is impressive. He gave an early commitment to Texas last December, talked about going to Texas in October, and of course they had to hold off USC because they came back in there until he signed the scholarship. But a cousin of Cecil Felder, so a uh, pretty good athletic family. And of course, Ricky signed a, a pro baseball contract, and uh, which is legal with the NCAA. You can do that, but, but Coach Gus can't get his services here in Texas to play baseball. Mm -hmm. to the 10 and Mike it looked like only a two man route by Texas two man route good heavy protection you had Mike Adams on one side yet Justin McLemore on the other side Michael Adams working down the field ran a post earlier now is running a comeback against Corey Turner number 21 see the respect for the speed give him enough room and you see he's moving up the receiving yards well all time leader 1850 yards with that reception and he told us yesterday in a closed meeting he said I have to admit that is very important to me Ricky Williams close to the five yard line as Cody McGuire will put a stop on him. You're talking about Ricky Williams, Ron, of all the things ability wise. The other thing is he's really intelligent also because he's wearing the number of his running back coach, Ricky God, Bucky, Bucky Godboat, God who was a receiver at Boston College. Now that was his jersey, so here's a smart player. Ricky Williams says, I'll wear your number in honor of you. So you obviously you're gonna play the guy, right? I Move. Well, it's it's smart, but probably ability had something to do with it too, doesn't it? Well, I think Bucky would be glad he's wearing. <laughs> John Mitchell, touchdown, Longhorn. First half here for the Texas Longhorns, and of course, 
great tradition they have here at Texas. When you think Texas football, I think of Daryl Royal and the great job he did here coaching. But this has been an impressive first half for the Longhorns. Dawson with the extra point attempt, and he's good. 21 to nothing. Longhorns on top. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Memorial Stadium. Five minutes, ten seconds left to play until halftime. 21 to nothing. Texas on top. Sean Mitchell, two touchdowns tonight. The scamper just a moment ago. He had a 32-yarder back in the opening quarter. And the sellout house in Austin after the 21st point is aroused. Dawson to kick it off. Dane Johnson back in a deep safety for the Red Raiders. Up here in the booth with us, and we're very pleased that he could take time during this ball game to come and see us. Coach, good to see you. Three national championships here with this ball club, but you got to be a little sad at heart at seeing this conference come to an end. Well, I am. Uh, as many good things as help ha happened to me, Ron, I can't help but be a little nostalgic when it's coming to an end. When I came in here years ago, 40, almost 40 years ago, 39 to be exact. Uh, I was a young guy, 32 years old, and, and we had some great people in the Southwest Conference, people like DX Bible, like uh, uh, Coach Neely down at Rice, and Matty Bell, and Dutch Meyer, uh, athletic directors running the programs there, John Barnhill up at Arkansas. And it was, uh, it was just, it was awesome. I can't tell you how thrilled I was to come in and be a part of the conference and, and how those men welcomed us young coaches in and uh, I, I think about those days when I watch these ball games for the last time as a Southwest Conference. That pass is complete just across midfield and it's the buck on the receiving end from Zebby Lethers. Darrell times have changed so much in that 39 years though since you came on the 40 acres as far as kids and college football as a whole hasn't it. Well, I've noticed that there are more cheerleaders on the bench than there used to be. <laughs> One of the things that I don't quite uh, understand. I think they probably ought to be having their attention directed out there on the field. Well, there, there have been changes. Really have. A bunch of them. Texas coming on the blitz, and we have whistles. Coach Spike Dykes, one of your former assistants. I know you think very highly of him. He's uh, ball club struggling a little bit tonight, but I, I think oftentimes we say teams aren't playing very well but we don't give credit to the other ball club Texas really playing well tonight but Spike has got his work cut out for him. This is the best I've seen Texas look in a long long time if they can sustain this through the second half they've really got something going and that will be a great uh, help in their momentum for the rest of the year. They really are looking tremendous. Coach you look fantastic. We're uh, we're going to let you get out of here. I, I know you're enjoying life, and uh, the golf course is never very far away, is it? Not very far. Daryl Roy. Before we get away, he's got one more point we're going to get him to make. Mike, you mentioned Spike Dykes, and uh, I didn't respond to that. Yes, I'm I'm very very fond of Spike Dykes. He's one of those friends that are that is truly a loyal friend and and I will say this I'm 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 loyal to him in returning that friendship and I don't like to see that happen what's happening now to to coach Dykes but uh, what the heck I've got to say I'm enjoying seeing these Longhorns play the way they're playing the coach you're truly a coaching legend and you've done a lot for the college football game and as a former coach and uh, I want to thank you for all you've done you've done an awful lot for this game well, Mike I took more out than I put in but you're <laughs> nice to say it Darryl, thank you very much Daryl Royal former head coach here with the Texas Longhorns three national championships Retired, still lives here in the Austin area, and uh, as we mentioned, I sees uh, a lot of the golf course these days, which he deserves. 
third down and 15. Leftwich, all the time in the world, and then here comes the pressure, and he's going to be sacked by Fossey. Three times the Longhorns have gotten to him here in the first half. Ron, the receivers cannot get loose from the coverage of Texas, and that's what they're going to have to talk about at halftime. Spike Dykes, Coach Dick Winder, the offensive coordinator, because you've got to try to find a way to get those receivers loose. Here's Tony Brackens working against Ben Kaufman, just keeps working, trying to get the Zebby Lethbridge. Cage punt, hanging spiral. It is fumbled and picked up again by White and knocked all the way back inside the five. Brown out of the end zone, and it is intercepted and dropped. Wow, Hurd had his hands on it and probably was thinking about the end zone and could not hold on. Well, he's a short corner at five foot eight, and he really broke on the ball, Sean Hurd. In Texas Tech, this has been a first half of almost for him because they've had some chances, just like on this interception. Sean Hurd has this football. Justin McLemore comes back and plays a little defense on Sean Hurd and then breaks it up. But Texas Tech just has not been able to make these plays in the first half. McLemore could sense his presence, and it's a good thing he could because that would have gone for six. to the 45 yard line McKinley hanging on for dear life and Dan Neal with an outstanding block 41 yards well, Ricky Williams is very very impressive tonight he reminds me of Gerald Moore at Oklahoma runs the same style he's going to break against the green here the linebackers floor on the one side Dan Neal 69 with a very good block Justin McLemore, the receiver, picks up a nice block on the outside, and Ricky Williams is having a stellar first half here. Boy, last year, the Longhorns had a pitiful day in Lubbock rushing, and tonight, 166 on 19 carries. Adams has beaten his man inside the 10, first and goal, Texas. Don, he stutter stepped on his route like he was going to run a curl route and Barone McKinley just bought it for just a short period of time and Mike Adams is going to just take off and get behind number 22 McKinley and James Brown just puts it up here's the little stutter step on Barone McKinley and now he breaks inside and it's Katie bar the door here lucky for Barone McKinley to even get back and make the tackle. Play. Williams gets by one tackler at the two, at the one, out of bounds. Ricky Williams from San Diego, California. His mom has relatives in Houston, and he said he wanted to go to a school that he could win the Heisman let's Trophy go, at. Go. Came over here to Texas and talked to one of the former greats here, Earl Campbell, and uh, Texas had a leg up in the recruiting on Ricky Williams. In fact, Mike, you have to go back to the 70s. He's the first freshman to start since Earl Campbell. You can see he slipped. Brown missed the handoff. Going to lose a yard, but could have lost a lot more. Robert Johnson, number seven, again with another big defensive play for Texas Tech. This has been a very well-designed first half by John Makovic. Offensive play calling. He, and that, Go back to, again, the open date. You learn from your last year's film the mistakes you made. The open date give him enough time to make the necessary adjustments.
52 seconds left until the halftime, and the Longhorns have blown this one open. Bill Dawson tries to pick up the 28, Texas point. He's good. Good play action pass on the goal line. Good movement by John Makovic's tight end. James Brown with a fake. Wide open Steve Bradley. And two receivers out on that side. Really put Texas Tech in a bind in man coverage. And you see the open Steve Bradley for the touchdown. That block was thrown by Ricky Williams, so he proves that he not only can run the football, that he doesn't mind being a team guy and blocking as well. 95 yards, six plays, one minute and 52 seconds is what Longhorns used. We were talking about R.C. Slocum a little bit earlier being uh, pulling for the uh, Longhorns tonight. I'm at about now he may quit pulling for them because uh, they're looking very, very impressive here. Loses the ball. Oh. Taji Allen downfield to make the hit, and it's inside the five. Ron, Texas has two timeouts here, so they need to think about using these timeouts here with 45 seconds to go, and you got Texas Tech reeling a little bit. Got them backed up here. You could make something happen with those two timeouts. Hands barred, and he gets him a little space just out over the five. Jason Reeves defensively. John Makovic choosing to let the clock move here. Has to be pleased with the way his ball club has responded in the first half. Straight ahead, and this is Rod Hobbs, the senior out of Denver. And with the whistle on the play with the first down, it'll stop the clock with nine ticks left until intermission time. Number 17, Trey Thomas, on the stop. First half of their score, Texas 28 and Texas Tech nothing. Yes, Arkansas and Auburn. Auburn got back in the game. Down just across the 20. And here's an interview that Mike Adamley had just a couple of moments ago with Spike Dykes, the head coach of the Red Raiders. Coach, last week we had an Arkansas team that led Auburn 27 to nothing, and Auburn came back. How do you guys start to claw back in this thing? Right, we just got to take it slow and easy, and we got to come after them. And I, I'll tell you something, we just got to go play. We got to make the plays, and uh, we still win this ball game. So it's going to be hard. It's going to take a lot, lot of effort, but I think our guys can do it. One of the things we were talking about in the booth was the fact that your wide receivers have had trouble getting open. How do they do that? Yeah, they, they've done a great job with their coverage. We're just going to have to go game plan them a little bit and go get after them. We're gonna, we've got to be more successful on offense. We've had good drives. We just hadn't rung the bell. Okay, Coach, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Spike Dykes just a couple of moments ago as they open up their second half. That's Peel Scoble with the reception. Ron, the other thing they have to do is they've got to slow down the pass rush of Texas. Defensive front, Brackens, Rink, Stoney Clark. And the way you do that is by the screens and the draw. So I would expect that in the second half here early, Byron Hansbard would get a screen pass to try to slow down this Texas defensive front. See Tony Bracken's statistics. Mitchell in motion. It's Hobbs. Ball is loose. Picked up by Texas. Crenshaw.
Sometimes when it rains, it pours, and it's pouring here on Texas Tech. Rod Hobbs with a pretty good gain. Dropped the football, and Robert Crenshaw alert in the secondary, picked it up, and was able to turn it into points. Sometimes the magic works, sometimes it doesn't. Dawson tries to make it 35 to nothing. and home as you look at Crenshaw who returned the fumble for the touchdown. We'll be right back. There wasn't even any receivers to throw to. I mean, fourth down, you put it up for grab to try to get the first down. There wasn't even anybody out there. I'll see you next weekend. Well, Brackens may have missed almost four football games this year, but he really made up some ground here tonight. John Mitchell reverses the field, has the corner, out of bounds, just shy of the 50. Short drop and the look in, it's Mitchell. He gets blasted by Robert Johnson. Good strategy again by Texas, shifting the back out of the backfield. Sean Mitchell, number three, making him a wide receiver, which really stretches the eight-man front defense and just Running a simple hitch with him, number three, James Brown with the completion. Makes it second and four. John Makovic's mother's watching tonight. Greensboro from Barberton, Ohio. John was a quarterback there. The best, probably the best quarterback, in fairness to Barberton, Ohio, probably was George Izzo, who went on to play at Notre Dame. But John was a pretty good quarterback. 35 to nothing with 11-23 left in the third quarter. It's a big ball game tonight for John Makovic and uh, this Texas program because when you look at their remaining schedule at Houston and they get TCU and Baylor at home, somehow I think that game on 12-2 will decide this whole thing in the last year of the Southwest Conference. And you said tonight R.C. Slocum's actually pulling for the long arms, right? That would make the numbers right for him at least then the Aggies could control their own destiny since they were upset by Texas Tech 14 to 7 earlier. Sean Mitchell's ran this hitch out here a couple times. They're going to run this ball. In. Ricky Williams gets by one tackler and will take it just shy of the 35 yard line. McGuire pushed him out. Well, what I was going to set up Ron here is because they've hit the hit out here a couple times by shifting Sean Mitchell outside wouldn't be surprised here before long hitch and go on Verone McKinley with Sean Mitchell because probably figuring he's a running back he doesn't have a lot of patterns out there but they may set up the hitch and go it was Corey Chandler who was down on one knee and he is shaken up as the training staff has uh, come in from across the way for Texas Tech. Ron Thursday night's ball game uh, Florida State is beaten by Virginia which was a heck of a ball game on on ESPN I still think Florida State's got a chance though I don't think they're out in the national championship and uh, I didn't get a chance to hear uh, our group back in the studio today but uh, if they still beat Florida they're still back in the thick of this thing and they still got a chance Congratulations to uh, to George Welch and, and his crew though what uh, what a ball game they did something nobody else has been able to do in the ACC. I was really impressed with Mike Groh the quarterback for Virginia I thought he fought the whole ball game and made some uh, some big plays in that ball game. As you look at Spike Dykes looking for some big plays out of his defense. Mitchell will not make it back to the line of scrimmage. With the parity in college football, nothing is really surprising anymore, is it? It's the first year I've actually really watched this parity become a factor. Brown 
got it away and almost intercepted after McGarity couldn't hold on. Zach Thomas was closer to it. That's why, Ron, and you, you see in the top 10 and top 20, of course, congratulations again to Northwestern. Uh, Gary Barnett winning again, but I think you have a shot at any school in Division I right now taking a program into the top 20. Probably be Mike Adams' time here. Texas six of nine, a third down conversion. <laughs> Brown got it away. Adams trying to say he was held on the play. That was McKinley who got a hand on it. Pressure by Monte Rager, number 34, two freshman. Crowd likes this because Dawson is going to come on and try a long field goal. Of course, he is fresh in their minds and will be even at the end of the year. He kicked that 50 yarder into the win to knock off Virginia here just a couple of weeks ago. And in pregame, Ron, he hit a 57 yarder, so he's got the leg. got plenty of leg and he has the accuracy as well 52 yards Phil Dawson Zebby Lethridge intercepted tonight for the first time after 212 straight you see his numbers on the evening and Mike it's just it's like he's frustrated because he can't get something to light that fire for the offense. It's a real mismatch tonight, Ron. They, they can't handle the defensive front of Texas, number one. They're having trouble running the football, and the receivers can't get away. That's a bad combination. That's why it's 38 to nothing. Well, that was Chris Atkins who stepped up into the hole, all 292 pounds of him, out of Paris, Texas. He came to Texas at 340, right? Yes. He's lost more than you have. He's a load. 4940 and he bench presses 550 pounds. Say like a fire plug. Option play back into the boundary. And Lethridge gonna take it close to the first now, but he stopped at the 35 by Tyson King. You've followed the uh, Southwest Conference probably as close as anybody over the years, and uh, there's got to be so many great memories of the Southwest Conference for you as it closes down. No question about that, Mike, and probably the thing that, that will stand in my mind forever. We've now lived down here 25 years, and this conference has so many great memories, the legends, the great players, and sometimes folks get too wrapped up in some of the tragedies of the 80s, but they don't think about all those great other years that this conference enjoyed. Lethridge just going to step out of bounds. Couldn't find anybody, and it was Clarence Martin as a late flag comes in. Clarence Martin was pressuring him, number 90. Got to be a late hit on Zebby Lethridge, but there was another flag before that. <laughs> He's getting my vote as a referee for the best referee with signals all year. He is most animated. Oh, he's good. So as the discussion goes on, 38 to nothing, Texas, eight minutes, 37 seconds left to play third quarter. Offsides, defense. And now the other one, post play foul. 
So that would have happened after the play. Dead ball foul. Five yard offside has stepped off and an add 15 more, so it's 20 yards against the Longhorns. And Texas Tech the first down at the 44. Set up the screen. Walker going to be hit by Reed and stopped for no gain. Now we'll the procedure by the offense, which is declined. Second down. Gary Darnell, the defensive coordinator of Texas, really has had a solid game plan all evening on this tech offense. Hands barred, not much there. Stoney Clark and Shane Rake there to put the stopper on him. You see Gary Darnell, the defensive coordinator, wearing the contrasting color, so the Captains and the play callers on defense can find him on that sea of mass there uh, on the sideline. Former head coach of Tennessee Tech, assistant of Kansas State, Notre Dame. Florida also. Florida. Leffers being flushed out of the pocket, and it's intercepted by Westbrook. Ron, you could see the frustration in Zebby Lethbridge. He actually hit, I believe, Brian Westbrook out of bounds on this play. I don't think there's any call. Unless the flag came down late, but just frustrate, frustrating evening, evening for Zebby Lethbridge. But what makes this play is the pass rush on Zebby Lethbridge. Never had a chance trying to find Matt DeBuck. Just threw it right to Bryant Westbrook, who's played the last two games like the All-American corner, and you're going to see Sebby Lethbridge late on this. Forcing him out to the right side. Well, Texas leading 38 to nothing with seven and a half minutes to play in this third quarter. As the Longhorns came up with the turnover, Bryant Westbrook with the interception, and Spike Dykes Still puzzled with how to get his Red Raider club going in the right direction. They have made a gaggle of mistakes in this one tonight. John Mitchell comes out of the pack. He's going to score. Likes what he sees. Mitchell, third touchdown tonight, 105 yards rushing. Ron, he looked just like a strong running back going through the line of scrimmage. He's only 185 pounds, 5'10", but just runs through tackles on this play. Missed tackle by Dwayne Price, number one, and then the speed and acceleration of Sean Mitchell. Pretty impressive getting in the end zone. They're going to be able to put Bevo away early tonight. They're trying to make their own headlines tonight. As you look at Ricky Williams, two stiff arms, and he's still going, pushed out of bounds around the 40-yard line. Dane Johnson hit him last. 
Yeah, I don't think the baseball coaches are going to get a hold of him for a while. He's a pretty good football player. He said the baseball coaches used to come around to his games on hot days, and they'd say, football games, they'd say, I'd sure hate to be wearing those shoulder pads as hot as it is, but I'll tell you, I, if I'm Ricky Williams, I stay in this football game. He's a pretty talented running back. Forty-five to nothing. Texas leading over Texas Tech with two forty-five to play. This time Williams is hit as he gets to the line of scrimmage by Sean Banks. A little reminder that every 10, 30, and 50 minutes after the hour, ESPN will update you on all the scores in the world of sports. Including the top 25 scores, which you're seeing right now from college football today. You see the Tennessee score over a pretty good Southern Mississippi football team. Now, does Tennessee move up the ladder another notch to four? I think you got to move them up the ladder with the improvement that they have continued to show, don't you? Oh, I think there's no doubt about it. Drilled it. McLemore. Two receiver route run taking both wide receivers out Justin McLemore James Brown probably threw this ball as well as he's thrown a ball tonight as and he had as much on this football because he needed to drill it in there. Byron Hansbar just trying to talk to Zebby Lethry trying to stay in the ball game even though they're down 45 nothing still want to put some points on the board. Also gain a little for for your own psyche, right? You never say never. You just be always looking to improve, always looking to make some good things happen, even though the game may be out of reach. Ricky Williams. It's Hancock who finally wrestled him down at the 16. Dan Neal heading back to the huddle. He's a junior out of Cypress Creek at 6'2, 285. Some of the players think that he's almost like a, a throwback to uh, generations prior. He just, his favorite thing is to lace up those high tops and get in there and just get bloody with uh, with the opposition and see what he can move out of the way. John Makovic said he's one of the best offensive linemen he's ever had in college football, if not the best. Williams get plastered in the backfield as he is hit by Alan Wallace. And for a little bit more on Neal, let's go down and check in with uh, Mike once again. Well, guys, it's funny that you mentioned Dan Neal because he is, uh, I think, our unsung hero tonight. We talk about Tony Brackens and company, but watch number 69. He takes on the All America Zach Thomas. Then a pancake here on number 74. And then the pass protection against Cody Patton. He's had a great night, and you're right, he's a throwback. Makovic loves him. This should be the last play of this quarter. Had a quick post over the middle. Incomplete. Scarborough is the man that he wanted on the play. So it stops the clock with 10 seconds to play in the third. Brings on Phil Dawson again for another field goal attempt. Dawson, if you joined us late, had a 52 yarder, which is a career long for him. That was here in the second hand. Matt Davis, the wide receiver to hold. <laughs> 32 yarder on the way, and he's got it. Five seconds left in this third quarter. Well, that North Wind continues to work up a little better action here on this Saturday night. Unseasonably cool, but these guys aren't feeling it. They are just enjoying it. You're right, Texas Tech's feeling the cold air, but Texas on their sideline, I mean, they're 
pumped up with everything going right tonight for the Longhorns. to the 45-yard line. Byron Lloyd there defensively for Texas. In one statistic that will be broken again for Zebby Lethbridge tonight. He came into this game having either ran or passed for a touchdown in each of his 16 career starts. So that appears to be going by the wayside also. Mike, uh, just what you were talking about is if things have not been bad enough for the Red Raiders tonight. They're down 48 to nothing, but this is hands barred. Oh, you can't afford to get him hurt here in this in this ball game. He has really had a good ball game, over 100 yards. Mike, that is a knee that they were attending to. Going to watch here at the end of the play. Byron Hansbard getting hit by Dwight Kirkpatrick, injuring a knee. Bill Scoble, the intended receiver, incomplete. Other news in uh, football, and I know you traveled around, did some NFL games. I cannot believe, being from Ohio, that the Cleveland Browns will move out of Cleveland, Ohio. There's just no way that's going to happen. Now, I know all the reports are that uh, they're considering Baltimore, but I just do not believe Art Modell will move that football team out of Cleveland. Couldn't agree with you more. As it's like Cavazos who was shaken up on the play. Well, time is back in, and Cavazos was shaken up, so we're going to get a third quarterback for the Texas Tech Red Raiders. It's Matt Tittle, 6'2, 195, a redshirt freshman out of Flower Mound, Texas, same place that the Fiebiger brothers are from. It's Rod Hobbs with the carry. The injury to Byron Hansbard really plays in this ball game, Ron, because you got such an outstanding back. Texas Tech cannot afford to lose him. Let's check in with Mike Adamley quickly. Mike, what do you have? Boy, Mike Gottfried, indeed they can't. And uh, the preliminary good news, it's not the knee, but I see the trainers applying one of those inflatable casts to his lower leg, his left leg. They're going to take them in for x-rays. They're not quite sure. Let's hope it's not a broken bone. Trainer Texas Tech Ken Murray very very good trainer and. Uh, looking at that injury right now trying to figure out. What to do with Byron Hansbard. Oh, you had just mentioned in a ball game like this, the coaches just want the clock to run. You want to get out of here. And the last thing you want is our injuries. And to have it to happen to the guy that's that's been your your bell cow is that that's really pouring salt in the wound. And late in a season like this, you get a cold night. Bill Scoble catches it and is out of bounds at the two-yard line. McKelvey, I know that they are going up against substitutes in the secondary and the linebackers. But I want to make a point about Cavazos. You mentioned in the first half that you thought that Lethbridge was too conservative and was afraid to throw the interception. Cavazos has not been afraid to throw the ball down the field, and he's already got three big receptions. Well, sometimes that can happen to you. Texas is going to have either too many men on the field or. Caught it out of bounds. Fee bigger. Texas tried to get a late substitution on the field. I believe it's Cody Danaher. And he didn't make it on the field. It's either going to be offside on uh, Texas, an illegal substitution, or 12 men on the field. I was going to say it might have even been 12 men on the field, Mike. As the discussion goes on, I'm going to send along a, a special hello and, and get better quickly to Bill Sansing. Uh, he's a longtime friend. He was the first sports information director here at the University of Texas. He is. It is a touchdown. They ruled that he did have one foot in bounds. So let me uh, 
complete my thought here. Bill Zansing is recovering from a heart attack at uh, Northeast Baptist Hospital in San Antonio. I need to to add one more line here. Cards are welcome, but no visitors or phone calls yet. Please, Bill, the first sports information director here at, at Texas, but went on to leave his mark nationally. Mike is he ran Golden Bear Corporation for the marketing portion of it for Jack Nicholas for many many years. Tony Rogers. Knocks it home and we'll take a break with our new score Texas 48 and Texas Tech 7. Mike Adams back deep for Texas but not very deep. He is pulled to within the 20 yard line as the Longhorns have the good hands group out there looking for the onside kick. Mike Adams is a lot of people consider him one of the better receivers in the country and uh, there's always talk about players leaving but Mike Adams needs to stay here at the University of Texas because he's missed a couple spring practices missed the fall. And it's going to be recovered at the 42 yard line. Tried to hit that void area as Westbrook. One of the guys of the good hands team makes the catch. Well, how about the running backs tonight for Texas? Sean Mitchell, three touchdowns, 105 yards on 11 rushes. And Ricky Williams, 15 times he carried it for 113 yards. I want to ask you another question, Ron, as you look at John Makovic with a pretty good feeling tonight. Does Northwestern move ahead of Florida State? I don't think so, but I'm going to ask you. Mike, with what they've done this year and the competition that they have played and the people they've beaten, the way they've beaten them, I wouldn't argue with it if it did happen. Yeah, I don't want Mike Adamley now. He's, he may get, uh, he's got a couple minutes here to respond to that, but uh, he probably feels they should. Mike, you, you down well, there? I've, I've seen Florida State. I've seen Northwestern. I don't think that the Cats dead, necessarily should be ranked ahead of uh, the Seminoles. But I will say this. You know, they are no longer. They are a Cinderella story, but they are not a Cinderella team. Like Ron mentioned, if you beat Penn State, if you beat Michigan and Ann Arbor, you beat Notre Dame in South Bend, you're not a Cinderella team anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> You've already broken the slipper and the mold. Now the clock's not going to strike midnight for them until they go to a, an alliance bowl. Darrell Wilson, the ball carrier here. Walton continues to operate a quarterback. Mike is a little disappointed, though, that uh, on TV and on the uh, college football show today that Charlton Heston was uh, quoting poetry there as, as Moses, and I thought it should be you. <laughs> well, I was I was a theater and drama major myself, but my biggest uh, play was a funny thing happened on the way to the forum. He did the Ten Commandments, so. Did you guys get beat by Southern Cal or what? Out there? <laughs> <laughs> Under six minutes left to play in this one. Wilson again. Hit behind the line of scrimmage by Zach Thomas. Living down here and following the Southwest Conference, what do you think the uh, at the strengths of the new league for Texas as they come into the new league? I think their division's going to be strong, the toughest division. You agree with that? Yeah, I, I think I do agree with that. Uh, the way the way that it is set up. The thing that's going to be interesting, Mike, is this conference in all sports, the Big 12, that is, I'm speaking of across the board is going to be extremely extremely tough and we'll give you some whys and what fours in just a minute. This is Bosick to uh, handle the punting chores again. Hey. Well, here's a look at the Big 12 Baylor Oklahoma Oklahoma State Texas Texas and and Texas Tech in the south. Colorado, Iowa State, Kansas, K State, Missouri, and Nebraska in the north. Now, Mike, considering that last week, eight of the 12 of those teams were in the top 25 in football, in basketball last year, 
I know at one time at least five if not six of those clubs were in the top 25 Oklahoma State made it all the way to the final four two years ago in baseball five of those teams were of the eight final eight at the College World Series you throw in wrestling you throw in golf and tennis and track and swimming this may turn into the best league in America overall sports. Are you trying to say that Steve Hatchell probably has a great job now as commissioner. I think that Steve Hatchell is going to be extremely proud of the Big 12 conference. Yeah. The other thing they're all going to have to learn with uh, how to ha how to handle is knocking each other up. It's interesting that you say that because when you increase the leagues and you just like the SEC does when you look at those divisions uh, those are tough divisions both of them. And, uh, Terry and then, Bowden said a couple uh, about a week ago he was talking about your play away or two plays away from uh, greatness and or dropping down to third or fourth in that league. Well not only are the team stuff and then you throw in the rivalries playing games away and it's. And you form some new rivalries now with this conference. Yep. Cavazos almost intercepted. McKelvey had an opportunity to pick it off. Brad Cade stands by to punt. Penalty stepped off, so Cade will move back and uh, get this one at around the six yard line. yard line by Alan Wallace. But it's time now for our visa players of the game from Texas Tech Byron Hansbard. 24 carries 110 yards for Hansbard and for Texas let's go to the defensive side of the ball. Tony Brackens five tackles three for losses and seven hurries tonight as part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics visa proud to donate one thousand dollars to each of these universities. $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these athletes. Spike and Zach Thomas. The conversation going here. Greg Felix in the quarterback now for the Texas Longhorn. Hands it back to Wilson. And Wilson takes it to the 39 yard line. Texas led 28 to nothing at halftime. And the killer for Texas Tech is as we open play in the third quarter, a couple of successful plays. They turned it over. Crenshaw picked up the ball, ran into the end zone for the touchdown, and the route was on. Yeah, Texas never gave him a chance to get back in this ball game right from that start. And that fumble, Crenshaw won in the end zone. That just put the lights out early. Clayton carries up over the 45. But this is still, as I said before, Texas Tech, they've got the remaining games. TCU SMU Houston you're still looking at a bowl team here a team that was at the Cotton Bowl last year Spike Dykes has just done a remarkable job of building that program at Texas Tech in the Cotton Bowl against Southern Cal last year and will be back bowling again this year about to go under two minutes left in our ball game. Wilson on the counter tray. They made good use of their time. Josh Sumner, the ball carrier here. 
Dash gets knocked down for a loss of a couple of yards. For Felix, he's out of Poth, Texas. 6'1", 185, a senior. Fourth year walk on. And these are some of the youngsters getting to play now. Those that are so important to you to get the day's work done to practice, but they rarely, if ever, get to play. This is their reward. Their reward for practicing every day in those hot summer days, two a days. This is their reward to get out on the field. That's Jeffrey Clayton. Well, let's see if this comes off. The ice attack. I think they're going for Gary Darnell, the defensive coordinator, though, aren't they? Yes. No, the defense is perfect tonight. They've, they've hit everything that they've taken a shot at. You know, that's a great scene there because you work so hard as a coach and you work so hard with the players and the, the feelings of chemistry on a ball club where there's so much respect and the togetherness and the team attitude, you just see it. Well, now they're going to wind up with a penalty here, so Texas has to call a timeout rather than get the five yard delay penalty. And we have three seconds left in our ball game. So for Spike Dykes, back to the drawing board. And first and foremost, they got to get some offense going, Mike. Yeah, he, he's got a chance. He'll get Darden back probably next week, but he's got a chance to win all three of those ball games and close out this season. And make it a very successful season. Because what happens here is you get a very good defense that, that goes away with injured pride and psyche tonight because they got hammered, but they had to play all night also because the offense did not give many help. No, they didn't make the plays. He said it at halftime. They had opportunities to make plays, they just didn't make them, and then this game just became a snowball coming down the mountain. That man knew exactly how huge this ball game was. And he not only won it, he won it going away. Well, that's the end of our ball game with the final score, Texas 48 and Texas Tech 7. For Mike Godfrey, Mike Adamley, this is Ron Franklin saying so long for Austin. Texas Tech.